Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're jumping right in because there's no design to worry about. This is just a slight variation of the grub I did in the last video. So if you want to see how that was designed, check that one out. But this one's just going to be a full-on ribbed body. I want to see uh, how those come out. But I also did it as a uh, core shot mold. I don't know if this is going to work out because I'm not sure if I'll be able to get these uh, two molds back together once all these little ribs are uh, shot. But we'll see what happens. I'm going to pull, a, pull the rods out for the first shot just to see how the body comes out. So uh, let me heat up some plastic and we'll try to do that. All right, here we go. If you've seen my last videos, you know I like to shoot around 300. See what happens. All right, let's see what we got. So far, so good. I don't think there's any way I'm going to get these back together, though, for a core shot. I only put oil on half the mold just so those would stick in there. But those look pretty good. Get you in camera here. There's no lighting. Let me pull them out of here and I'll zoom in. All right, here's the first shot of grubs. They came out pretty good. Again, I didn't do anything uh, special with the color. This was just some uh, pinks I had and uh, that purple from the last video. I just mixed it all together. These things are uh, very flexible though. I don't know if that's the whole uh, shtick with these uh, full body ribbed grubs, but seems pretty cool. I'm gonna set this up again and uh, see if we can uh, get that core shot to work. So this is round two with the rods. Let's see how this came out. Just did a clear with a little bit of glitter. Let's see if I can get these rods and stuff out of here. I don't really want to take the whole thing out, but I think I have to take most of it out. It's not easy to do on camera. Might have deformed that one a little bit. Should let these uh, set up a little better. No going back now. It's probably a very ambitious design to do for the first core shot I've ever tried. So I went with something solid first, probably. Might rip that one a little bit. Maybe not. All right, now I just gotta, I'm gonna trim these tails off actually. Not a very good camera view here, sorry. All right, now I just gotta see if I can get this back together. Could it have been that easy? I don't know. All right, I'm gonna clamp this up again and uh, shoot a different color. All right, let's see if my uh, first ever core shot is successful. Oh, well, kind of, sort of, but not really. Got maybe one, maybe two. I don't think that one. I don't know what happened there. Let's pull this out of here and uh, see how it looks. My pla I did a clear with just a little bit of glitter, but 
it's not too clear because I don't really have a uh, vacuum chamber to suck out the bubbles, so I might have to rectify that. It's not too bad, I guess. First time, let me get in camera here. Hold on, I keep bumping you. A little bit. Maybe I should have used a brighter color. I don't know. We'll try a couple more and see what happens. At least the mold shut. I think I crushed that one a little bit. I don't know how it filled up the tail, but not the middle of the body. That's weird. I'll still fish it. One and a half out of three ain't bad, I guess. All right, we're going to try a couple more of these and uh, go from there. Okay, here's uh, shot number two. This should come out a lot better because I did it off camera and I took my time. Can't promise anything, though. Looks like uh, all three of them worked that time. I think the problem I had with the first one was I didn't make sure that tip was uh, open all the way before I shot it. But these are looking pretty good. Not too shabby. The problem why these are so dull is I forgot. It's not that I need a vacuum chamber to suck the bubbles out. It's just, I've probably never mentioned this, but anything... Uh, shot into a 3d printed mold is going to come out dull because it's not a smooth uh, finish because you can see clearly this is what comes off of the knife i mean this dead-on plastic stuff is uh, is amazing or it's just so clear and here's uh here's a tube out of the nozzle i don't know if it shows up on camera but you can tell that's nice and shiny and bright the sparkle shows up good whereas the thing coming out of the 3d printed mold is definitely going to be dull because of the finish of the mold uh, I think what I'm going to do in this video later on is actually try uh, spraying one of these molds with some high temp engine paint. Somebody gave me that a tip a while ago on uh, Instagram, so uh, probably eventually get around to trying that, and uh, we'll see how that works out. But for now, uh, I think these might be a little too thin to get a, a jig head into, like the body's awful thin, so I might actually uh, do a modify the design a little bit to make it a little bit wider. So I think I'm going to go do that and. Uh, as always, we'll be back, but you don't have to wait because editing is awesome. All right, here we are the next day. I got the new mold printed up uh, with the fatter body, and I clearly already shot the first color. And I think the best way to put this together is to actually just coat these with a little worm oil. Make them slide in the mold a little easier. Let's see what happens here. Might go out of frame. Let's see what I'm doing here. Just like that. I think those went together good. Let's give this a second shot and uh, find out. Let's see how the first double shot of this mold came out. Should be uh, real contrasting if it works because I shot with some galaxy black. Oh, that's uh, really dark stuff. I don't know if anybody's wondering what these uh, three holes were. I just put uh, three set screws in there to hold the rods if need be, but I don't think I'm actually going to need those. Let's get one of these out of here and see how they compare to the other ones. Definitely looks pretty cool. Sorry, I always bump you guys. I gotta get a better camera mount. But it looks pretty cool. Let's get one of the original ones over here. You can see the get that to focus. Body's a lot fatter. I went with the same size as the last grub I did. But overall, came out pretty good. I'm gonna try a few other things. Let me get these other ones out of here. And uh, we'll move on to something different.
This was just an experiment to get a fatter uh, center body there. Who knew you could do a reverse core shot? But is it really a core shot if you shoot the core first? I don't know. These are questions I have no answers to. Kind of weird, just playing around. Nothing too crazy. Let's figure out what's next. So while I was waiting for some other fun stuff to be delivered, I uh, went back and uh, printed another one of my uh, Cuttlefish Reaper molds. If you haven't seen that video, uh, go back and check that out. This one just has a little bit of a thinner tail to try to get some more flutter out of it, but I went and uh, I painted half of this with some high temp engine paint, and this is supposed to be good up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, so we'll see if it holds up to the Plastisol. I want to see if I can actually get a smooth finish with a, a 3D printed mold, and this is supposed to help, so I'm going to go inject one of these and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, here's the final result. This actually uh, did make an improvement. Hopefully this shows up on camera, but you can see a nice uh, shiny side on this half. That was the painted half. And this is the dull half. So definitely, definitely an improvement. And just kind of like a comparison, this came off my polished uh, aluminum stirring stick. So you, that would kind of be like a finished aluminum mold. And you can see it's definitely uh, shinier than even the, the painted 3D printed mold. But... For you guys that are 3D printing your molds, if you like shiny baits, uh, think about uh, spraying them with some of that engine paint. It definitely makes an improvement. All right, let's get back to that fun stuff I was talking about before. All right, so I shot these fun ones off of camera. They look like your uh, everyday plain kind of white boring grub, but wait for it. How cool is that? I did a dual color glow in the dark core shot. Uh, it doesn't really show up too well, but this one's kind of a blue with a green tail. It probably doesn't focus that well in the dark. But uh, let me show you how I did this. Okay, this is the glow pot I use from Lure Works. This is a Super Glow Aqua 174. Uh, much like the core shot idea, I also got this idea from Chris on World's Worst Fishing. He did this before and it came out looking pretty cool, so I thought I'd give it a shot. This stuff is pretty expensive. This is like 10 bucks for an ounce, but I found a, a big bag of this stuff on Amazon. It's, uh, I think it was like 13 bucks, and you get 12 different colors. You get a whole bunch of different colors. So I'll lay these out and show them to you. Give me a sec. All right, here's all the colors I got from uh, the Amazon package. Uh, I don't know how much is in each one of these. Maybe half an ounce, quarter ounce. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. But for 13 bucks, you definitely get a better value than the lure work stuff. And it also comes with this little uh, keychain UV light, which uh, charges it up. Uh, normal flashlight will charge this glow powder too, but I think UV light works a little better. So uh, let me turn the lights off here, and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, clearly some colors work better than the others. Uh, these couple on the end don't really glow that well compared to some of the other ones. But maybe I just didn't charge them up enough. And they're in the bag, so sometimes it's a little hard to see how they look. A little glow, but... Uh, up here on the very top, this is the Lure Works blue I used, and down here is the green I used for the tail. And like I said, it, it still glows, not as bright as it is in the bag, and I'll show you why that is after. But uh, let me turn the lights back on here, and uh, we'll mix up another batch of this stuff. I think I'm going to try maybe this contrasting orange and with this green, and uh, see how that looks. All right, this is the powder I'm going to be using this time. They just call it pink. Uh, I got it all charged up, so let me show you what the raw powder looks like uh, with the lights off. Looks more of an orangey tint to it, but hopefully that shows up on camera pretty good. You can see through the bag it really doesn't show up that well, but straight up it does. So let's get this mixed up and uh, see how it looks. It's over to 350 mark, so we're going to start adding some powder. Now, unlike mica powder, this stuff doesn't actually mix in. It's actually kind of gritty when you're stirring it. I'm going to be using, I think this is about an eighth inch of a teaspoon. And I don't really know how much to add, but I'm going to throw in uh, two of these. 
because I think the more powder you add, the better it's going to glow. So let me get that stirred up. It's a little clumpy in there, but like I said, it's gritty. I don't know if you can hear that, but it definitely does not mix in like mica powder. So the only coloring you see right now, that's the actual powder, and it's not blending. Get that broken up, all those little chunks. Probably stirring a whole lot of air bubbles in there, but stuff's a little different to work with. You can kind of see it doesn't actually mix in, it's just... Just floating in there. All right. Uh, right around 300. Let's give this a shot. I am just going to be shooting the tail, so I'm going to be doing a reverse uh, core shot again. All right, I'm going to give that a little time to cure up. All right, these are what the tails look like. Uh, add it, I guess adding enough powder does make it kind of like mica powder where it did tint the whole thing. So these are gonna work good whether they glow or not. But let me show you what these look like with the lights off. So it's got a pretty good glow to them. Again, I don't know if it's gonna show up in camera as it does in uh, real life, but it looks pretty cool. You can see the cup glowing pretty good. That does definitely look more pink now. But all right, let me uh, get the other color mixed up and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I'm just gonna be using that same uh, green I used on the first one. This is actually a yellow green powder and I'm just gonna add some more powder to it. I think I said this was a eighth inch and this is actually a quarter inch teaspoon. So we're gonna add one more of that to this first one. I don't know what I did. I think on the first one, it was a third of a cup of Plastisol with two of these. This is probably uh, about a quarter left. One more of those, and I'm going to add an eighth inch of uh, flake to it just to see how that comes out. I don't know if that'll make any difference, but we'll see. Get this uh, re-stirred. Might have to heat it back up a bit. You can see that, but that flake looks pretty cool in there. I won't show up in at depth, but... See if I got enough of this to do the bodies, hopefully. Oh, I screwed that up. All right, let's try this again. Having all kinds of issues today. So this is how the second round came out. Uh, just as a normal grub, they came out looking pretty good. Uh, I have a little bit of flashing on there. I haven't cleaned anything up yet. You can see it in between the fins here somewhat. But uh, let me shut the lights off here and see how these things look. And this is what they look like glowing. This is uh, definitely pretty cool. I love this green and uh, pink tail. Much like uh, the clear baits, the 3D printed mold does uh, kind of hinder the glow powder a bit because this, this is a piece that came out of the actual injector so it has a nice smooth finish and it actually, grow, uh, it actually glows a lot brighter. So 3D printing always isn't the answer, but uh, overall it works pretty cool. So we can do some fun stuff with it. I think for now I'm going to shoot a couple more in this blend of colors and then uh, maybe try another couple different combinations and uh, see how those come out. So I decided against doing any other uh, colors until I figure out if these are going to work or not. Uh, I'm not sure if these thin bodies are actually going to hold the jig head in there or not, so I want to actually uh, test these out before I waste any more glow powder. But this is what I want to show you. Uh, this is what I use to charge the lures when I'm on my boat. Uh, it's basically just a uh, clear tube in here and it has a a strip of UV LEDs wrapped around it and a 3D printed housing and it basically uh, just plugs into the cigarette lighter on my boat. And uh, basically that clear tube, if I'm using anything like a crankbait, it just allows me to drop it in there and uh, the hooks won't hook on anything because everything in there is smooth. So uh, 
Let me shut the lights off here and I'll show you how this works. I did do another batch of the Colorworks uh, Grub Color. I just added a whole bunch more powder to see how it worked. But basically when I'm on a boat, I uh, just step on the button. You can see the lead strip in there now. And I basically drop the whole bait in there on the line, charge it up for, say, I don't know, 5, 10, 15 seconds. And then we pull it out. It's got that nice super glow to it. This just basically allows me to make a few casts and uh, recharge the lure every time. I'll show you what this uh, crankbait looks like, too. This one was actually printed with uh, glow-in-the-dark 3D filament. So... That thing glows nice too. I've actually caught uh, quite a few fish on these. I've got a couple uh, other ones too. Uh, Jitterbug one works pretty good. But overall, that's how I use the glow lures when I'm on the boat. So I think these are going to work out uh, pretty well. So I'm uh, going to get out and uh, test these out and see what happens. And we'll be back after all that. Got these little uh, Ned rigs. Try rigging up one of these uh, small grubs. I got these because they just have a, a straight shaft and I think they'll uh, be able to go in there a little easier. I got that little hook too, so hopefully that uh, keeps them in there. I'm not very good at uh, rigging shit up though. Something like that, I guess. All right, let's go see if we can get some Johnny Roaches. Apologize if the camera's angle's off. It's the first time using this camera. Oh, I think I got a Johnny Roach. Better than nothing. Better than nothing. <laughs> oh, shit. Careful of those automatic motors. All right. See you later. He's got any brothers. Johnny roaches for days. Oh, bit my tail right off. There's something. There's one. There's the bass. That's what we're looking for. There we go. That's it. I'm happy now. I can go home. He's a dink. But, tell you brothers, 
I'll be here all day. It's gotta be a fish chilling right there. Perfect cast. So perfect, I snagged a rock. Here's one. See that? Spit it. <sighs> That's how my day's going. Got a stick. It's fighting pretty big good though. Oh, there's one. That's not a oh, stay down, stay down. It's not a bad one. Not for me anyway. He's got a little fight in him. He's got a little fight. Right. Oh. It's not too bad. I'll take that any day. All right, dude. See you later. Oh, damn it. It's like the perfect cast, too. Just asking to be snagged. Oh, shit. something there's something that's a stick oh, it was a stick Oh, what's that pickerel? You got the pickerel. Fighting pretty good. Oh yeah, it's a big pickerel. All right. Big old pickerel. Come on, dude. Where are we going? Hold on, hold on, you're gonna cut it, get in the boat. That's a good size pickerel. Don't bite me. Not too bad. Liking these grubs. Alright. Go ahead, dude. Oh, 
there's a good one. There's a good one. Oh, is that another? No, that's a bass. Thought it was another pickle for a second. Ooh. Too bad. You got fishing line in you? Or is that my fishing line? Oh, that's somebody else's fishing line. Oh, somebody gut hooked you, huh? Let me trim that out anyway. I got as much as I could, buddy. Sorry about that. Good luck. Oh, shit. No good deed goes unpunished. All right, I am back from fishing, and as you saw, I caught some fish. These grubs worked, but uh, let's be honest. If you can't catch a fish on a grub, uh, you're doing something wrong. Overall, uh, the mold held up uh, pretty well. I did get a little bit of wall separation uh, up on the tip of some of these, but I think that has more to do with my uh, crappy print settings than anything. I was also uh, happy to find these... Uh, little jig heads the straight shank with this that little hook on there uh worked awesome on these uh little grubs fit in there uh and held nicely whereas uh these other uh jig heads i normally used i think that would have pulled right out being so thin so that was a good find i uh also had these big ones too but uh they were a little large uh, i mean the hook went all the way to the tail i mean i did end up catching one fish on those so i guess it worked but uh, the little ones fit the the big grubs better, I think. But as you can see, I uh, I did shoot a whole bunch more of those uh, glow-in-the-dark pink ones there. But unfortunately, I didn't get to try them because I usually uh, wait till it's like dusk or even dark to fish the glow stuff. But it got cold and I was freezing my ass off, so uh, I beat it before the sun went down. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make a little grab bag up of uh, some of this stuff and uh, do a giveaway. Also, uh... You saw the little grub uh, get his tail bitten off, so what I think I need to do is uh, change the design a little bit and just bring the tail up into maybe that uh, second uh, rib there so it's a little more uh, durable. So I will probably uh, never use this mold again, so I think I'm going to give that away too. Give somebody a chance to try a 3D printed mold. So uh, if you want some of this stuff, uh, just uh, be a subscriber, uh, give me a like, and uh, leave a comment. If you want the grubs, just put grub at the end of your comment, and if you want the mold, put mold. Uh, that way I can uh, pick two random people and uh, send them stuff. Uh, if you're not set up to do your own molds, uh, don't be a dick. Don't go after the mold. Be happy with a chance at the grubs. Let somebody that's set up uh, to shoot their own stuff already be able to try a 3D printed mold. They're probably going to melt it anyway. But with that said, I am going to wrap this video up. So uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Later, bitches.